This is cycle one science for weeks 21 and 22, mineral identification. This is a really cool hands-on science experiment. The kids get an opportunity to uh, work with different minerals and to also talk about uh, mineral properties. Your director will provide you with a mineral kit that will have a number of different minerals um, in it. I have three examples of minerals uh, here that, that the kids will, will, will get to handle on our campus. This is a fool's gold, which is officially called pyrite. This is quartz. And then uh, my personal favorite mineral, mica. Uh, this this uh, science experiment, we're going to look at five different properties in our kit, uh, four of the different minerals. We're going to look at hardness, uh, the streak test result, the uh, transparency result, the luster result, and the habit uh, of each of the minerals. Um, in order to, to do that, we have a, a couple of other, of other uh, pieces that we need. These are porcelain plates or tiles. This is for the streak test. We have small magnifying glasses for the habit test. Uh, for the hardness test, we, we have two options. Uh, we have glass, uh, so around ground glass. We also have um, nails. Um, they, they each have about the same hardness, which is important, and, and so we'll, we'll kind of get to that in just a second. Um, but again, the purpose of this experiment is for the kids to get their hands on these minerals and to look also in a very hands-on way at the different properties of minerals. Uh, the different mineral properties are how scientists classify the minerals and how when a, when a, when a sort of random mineral is found, how we can determine uh, what it is. So um, with the five stations then that you need to set up, um, you need to cover the five stations over the two week time period. I'll have a little bit more to say about my recommendation for that here in just a second, but I wanna talk about each station first. So for the hardness station, we're gonna use the glass uh, and the nails. The kit that we have uh, on our campus is uh, from Lighthouse and uh, there, there are 10 minerals in it. Uh, ruby, quartz, pyrite, field spar, hematite, limonite, selenite, calcite, gypsum, and mica. Uh, if you have a different kit, then you may very well have a different set of minerals. Um, uh, however, and, and you may have different tools. But the, the idea of the hardness test, one of the properties of the minerals is its hardness. And so what we're really doing is we're comparing its hardness, the, the hardness of pyrite, to the glass. And the way we do that is literally to, to set up a station where the kids can take each mineral and scratch it or rub it against the, the other surface. So if you have a strong, strong aversion to nails on chalkboards, it's a good week to call in sick. Just don't tell your director that I said that. Um, so that's why it's important then that the hardness of, of this nail and the glass are about the same. So um, the, the question then becomes, does the mineral make a small scratch on the glass surface or does, is the glass surface unchanged and the mineral itself deformed? And therefore we can determine whether the hardness of this mineral is, is softer than the glass, about the same as the glass, or harder than the glass. And so for each uh, property then of the minerals that we're looking at, you as the, as the tutor need to set up and create, help your students understand there are different subcategories or buckets within each one. For example, for hardness, the, if we look at the Mohs hardness scale, the nail and the glass have a hardness of five or six. So then we're creating three buckets effectively for each mineral. The question is, is it softer than these? Is it about the same hardness of, as these? In which case, neither one will really be scratched and the mineral itself will, will be slightly scratched. And, or is it harder than these? In, in, in which case the, the glass would be cut. Um, so our particular kit, again, that we have with those 10 minerals doesn't include diamond, which is surprising. But if it did, the diamond would be able to leave a clear cut, a clear mark on this glass. Um, but none of the, um, but, but the minerals that we have uh, don't include it. So it just depends on what you have and whether or not it will, will scratch this or not. Some of our minerals will. Okay, that's the, the hardness test. The mineral streak test we talked about um, earlier, uh, it's a key identification piece. We're, we're talking about not the color of the mineral here on the outside or, or the color of this mineral, but the question is, what kind of, of color does the powdered form of this mineral have? And so if we take the mineral and we scratch it on the porcelain um, 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 disc, or sorry, in this case, the porcelain square, then uh, we create a powder form and then it will have a distinctive color. For example, the pyrite, which is very shiny and metallic looking as gold, will actually leave a green black streak when the kids actually streak in. So that's, that's um, a, key, a key question or, or a key property um, of the minerals. Okay, and so then for, so the first station is the hardness, you want your, your nail and your glass. The second station is your porcelain 
uh, square that you have set up. Uh, your third station is the station for luster. Uh, luster, you need a strong light source. What I would suggest is, is um, a light, maybe the, that one of your kids has that attaches to a headboard, uh, something like that they would read with at night. You can set it up on the back of a chair or even clip it to a table so that the kids can work underneath it. You just need a very bright source of light uh, so that the kids can look then at each mineral and uh, determine its, its luster. So um, in general, the, we, we categorize them as luster of glass or glassy, meaning it looks very much like a piece of glass would look underneath the light, uh, metallic, luster looks very much like uh, a metal or something that we would call dulled which doesn't really this is a little bit glassy too the mica but but other minerals are a little bit more dull in there they don't reflect they reflect the light but it's not metallic it's not glassy it's this third category of, of dull uh, the the second station or sorry the fourth station uses that the second station though that uses that light source is the um is the uh, transparency of of the mineral so what i would suggest is is that the uh, for the for the transparency that you get a piece of cardboard scrap cardboard that you set it up um, you, you need a light source on on for this as well i really think a pen light would be better so a small light source so that the the diameter of the light that's being produced is smaller than any of the sides of the minerals that are in your kit if you use a big light source then you're going to ultimately cast a shadow but a pen light would be ideal i i do have one but i can't find it <laughs> right now uh, we'll talk with the 11 year old later and find the pin light but so if you imagine that the nail is a pin light then you imagine i would start for the station i would set the cardboard up and sh turn the, the pin light on so that the students see very clearly there's a small uh, beam of light that strikes turn the pin light off and then set up uh, your, your mineral for example quartz so if we set up the quartz piece uh, let's do it like that and then we are now to take our, our light source and turn it on, we'll see that, that uh, the light does pass through the quartz. It will be diffused a little bit, so it won't look exactly like it looks if the pen light is just striking the surface of the cardboard, but the students will see a clear uh, light on the other side. And so then this material, uh, we then would classify it as um, translucent, meaning it passes the light through. In contrast, the pyrite, if we were to set this up and now shine a light here, no light is gonna strike this cardboard. It's opaque. So that's the category, uh, is opaque and um, translucent. There's, there's another category um, that's similar to translucent, meaning how much of the light does it pass through? So the real question is, does it pass the light through the mineral or, or not? But then, for example, the mica piece um, is actually transparent um, and not translucent, which would mean if we were to, to set this up with, with an adult helper so that we can hold that piece, uh, if we were to write a word or draw something on this side, then as the students are illuminating the, 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 the surface on the other side, they can actually see what's written on this through the mineral. That means that the mineral is not um, just translucent, meaning it transmits the light, it's actually transparent. You can actually look all the way through it. Um, and then the, the final property that we're going to talk about is habit. I think that the habit property is a little bit more challenging. I think it would be so for the for the students in particular. The the habit, as as we know, is really the the general appearance of the mineral, the general appearance of the mineral. And so, there are there are several dozen different habits that that are used. And so, if we take ten random minerals and we're trying to group them together into sets, um, there, it takes a little bit of of planning about which habits you want to use. So in general, I think for weeks 21 and 22 as the tutor, you do need to do some prep work, getting these pieces set up, but also uh, particularly for the habit to define what habits you want the kids to put the minerals into. What buckets for that particular test uh, do you want them to, uh, to put them into? So again, we're using the Lighthouse Mineral Kit. So what I would suggest are, are crystalline, cubic, striated, or, or visible lines present on the, on the metal, sorry, on the mineral, uh, um, compact or massive, granular, or, or flaky, or plate-like, which is the mica. Um, so um, in this, this case, the students also need their, um, their bright light source. They wanna handle the minerals and they wanna use their, their small magnifying glasses to sort of to look in and just kind of get a sense of is, is the structure on the surface of this mineral, is it, is it, are there lines of striation? Is it granular? Is are, are there you know little almost geometric shapes? Uh, what does it look like? And so I think as the tutor, you'll have to help the kids maybe to to bucket uh, the, those minerals and classify them appropriately. So those are the five um, different properties of the minerals that we want to look at. 
What um, I would personally suggest you do if you have younger kids, so if you have apprentices or ABC Darians, then um, I would suggest that you break them into to three. Um, I, I created a mineral identification table. So over here I've listed the minerals again from the Lighthouse Kit. Uh, and then I would do them in this way. For week 21, I would look, have the students look at the hardness, uh, the mineral streak test, and the luster. I would set up those three. And then I would, I would have, if, if you have adult you know, parent helpers, they can help with each one. Um, if, especially for the apprentices, I would let each kid then take the minerals and in the hardness test, you know, scratch, attempt to scratch the surfaces with it and then classify each mineral, classify the ruby. Where does it fall? Is it softer than the glass? So it's less than five. Is it about the same as the glass, meaning its hardness is five or six on the Mohs scale? Does it scratch the glass, meaning it's harder than the glass? Uh, so its, it's um, hardness would be about six. So for the apprentices especially, I would let the kids do as much of that as they can. As the tutor, you may need to say we're going to do two or three uh, minerals in each category, letting the kids do it, and you may need to do the rest. Um, for the ABC Darians, maybe, maybe you want to take this piece of paper and do it as a group. And so everybody do um, the hardness test together and maybe let one kid or, or two kids do each one and then you do the rest of the minerals. Again, this kit has um, 10 minerals, so it's a lot. For kids that, that are you know would have trouble doing it um, I would suggest you do that for a week 21 and then in um, week 22 I would suggest the same idea mineral identification table 2 um, so you have the minerals listed here now I would look at transparency as well as habit um, you, you'll probably want to review the five properties of minerals that we're looking at at the start um, I think that these are a little bit more difficult again for the kids to do and so I would group them together and, and try to do just those two during week 22 do the other three um, during uh, week 21. Uh, this this is specific for the Lighthouse Kit, but uh, I, I am going to uh, help post these onto a CC Connected uh, with the help of my lovely assistant. And so if you go and look, uh, you should be able to find them. I also have a handy dandy mineral identification answer key that we'll post as well. So for each mineral, it, it classifies them for you. So you, you, you know that Ruby should scratch the, the glass or, or, the, or the nail. Okay, that's what I would do, especially for the younger uh, foundations kids. For the older foundations kids, for the journeymen and for the masters, I would try to encourage them to do those two tables in week 21. Go as, f as far as they can. Maybe you need to group them into pairs of uh, in pairs or maybe groups of three, probably no more than that, if that would help. I would try to get through all five tests during week 21 for all of the minerals um, in, 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 your, in your set and in your kit. And then in week 22, I would again start with a brief review and then uh, I, I would do the mineral detective table. I would tell them up front, if you guys can get through all five of these tests uh, this week for these minerals, then next week you get to be mineral detectives. Uh, and so to do that, then um, for the, the second week for week 21, uh, two, then you would pick out, I would suggest for the, for the lighthouse kit, I would take eight minerals. I'll give you I'll give you the specifics in a minute, but you want to number them with either with a sharpie or with a little sticky, so that they know each kid knows that whatever mineral this is. Um, in this case, the quartz would be mineral number two, and so then they're going to take this mineral and, and emphasize to them they may recognize some of the minerals, but that's not the purpose of their detective work. They have to prove their case in mineral court, so they have to actually take the mineral and then repeat the five tests so that they can then classify the different minerals. So they can determine and, and identify that this is in fact pyrite by filling out this table, the detective table, this is quartz filling out the, the table and then comparing it to their mineral identification tables one and two so they can match them up. And then the kids can uh, confirm and identify here that um, unknown mineral one is in fact ruby, for example. Uh, that's what I would suggest you do. So this is also, will also be on CC Connected. Um, and the uh, mineral table, mineral detective table answer key will also be on. So uh, don't let the kids uh, see that. Um, I think this is, a, this is a lot to do for weeks 21 and 22. The good news is that most of the prep work really is up front. It's in week 21, and then uh, the kids will have a, a really good time. Uh, this is a good hands-on experiment. They can learn a lot about minerals, about mineral properties. They can have fun, uh, for the older kids especially, being mineral detectives. Uh, that's how I would do cycle one, science, weeks 21 and 22.